Hi guys, yo, welcome back to the Common Misunderstood Quranic Test by Dr. Jama Badawi. So let's check it out. The Quran teaches self-criticism. It teaches fairness and saying the right thing, even if it be against yourself or your close kins. The Quran advocates justice even with the enemy, those who show enmity. You have also to say the word of truth and justice. Secondly, when we deal with the broader issue of relationship between Muslims and non-Muslims, I'm using non-Muslims in a positive sense, those who are outside or not part of the Muslim community of faith, I can't find any better word, but I'm using it in a positive sense. When we deal with this kind of relationship, we have to be honest and realistic also in realizing that we're talking about at least 1400 years of interaction some of which was surrounded by hostilities, other periods by cooperation, not only with Christians, but with Jews and others in building a civilization such as the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, Islamic universities in Spain that was the jewel of Europe. But there have been periods of conflict. So my second precaution on the issue of objectivity is to try and be aware of the historical legacy that could be cloud the thinking of Muslims or their friends for that matter. We have to keep that also clear in mind. A third and final aspect of methodology is that when we try to understand and or promote better understanding uh, between Islam and other uh, sister religions, it is very essential to make a clear distinction in mind between pure Islam, normative Islam, and the opinions and the way some people interpret certain aspects of it. There is only two, there are only two primary sources of Islam, no third. Oh, wow. One is the Quran that Muslims accept as the verbatim word of God dictated to the last Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through Angel Gabriel. The second is also another form of revelation known as hadith, and some scholars use the term sunnah, but basically it refers to the words, action, and approvals of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his capacity as a prophet, receiving revelation only in meaning, but expressing that in his own words. words. So hadith is not the word of God, but it is not the invention of the prophet. It is something that he's directed to tell people, but in his own oh. words. Anything outside of that, and must, you must have heard the term fatwa, which literally means a religious opinion or interpretation, are not infallible. They are not infallible. And there is no religious system or an institution in Islam that says that there is, for example, similar to basic concept about papacy, mm. that has the final authority as a person or religious institution to say, this is the only interpretation, this is the only opinion. Which means that any person's opinion, no matter how great scholars in the past or present are saying, has to be tested again is the primary sources of Islam and this is the reference of all and I do emphasize that because it is quite easy to launch a criticism against any world faith by quoting scholars of that religion mm. scholars are not perfect mm. you get 1400 years of scholarships you get people who might have given opinion based on certain circumstances surrounding them so to quote authorities even among Muslim scholarship in order to prove a particular point is not that definitive unless that opinion is tested again against the two sources, primary sources of Islam. Now, coming to the foundation for this presentation, the errors. And I thought perhaps a most logical and easy way to classify the errors in interpreting the Quran. There are many, but just chose the one that are relevant to our topic especially in Muslim, non-Muslim relation. First, relate to what I call errors of translation. 
a lot of people quote a translation of the meaning of the Quran and say, the Quran say. No. The Quran was not revealed in English. The Quran was revealed in Arabic. And it is well known that there are always problems translating from one language to the other. Actually, some scholars dispute whether there could be any translation of the Quran. I prefer to use the term interpretive translation of the meaning of the Quran. And oftentimes it reflects the translator's own understanding and images. So don't quote from a translation of the Quran, say the Quran say that it is the translation of the meaning of the Quran. A second problem or category of errors is that when the Quran is translated, it is so profound. And there must have been good reason why God chose the Arabic language with its richness and diversity of meaning, depending on the context, to reveal his last book, to give these profound meanings and express them. So sometimes even people translate lexically correctly, but in terms of essence and context, it is erroneous translation. So it's not just the lexical meaning in the dictionary. There are a lot more to interpreting and understanding the Quran than going to a dictionary and finding an equivalent word. It could be erroneous even though it's correct lexically. The third source of problems is what I love to call, the, using the computer language, the cut and paste approach. And I humbly suggest you my motto on that. If you use the cut and paste approach, you can prove anything you want from any scripture you want. Anything under the earth can be proven. And if you don't have a computer, you can buy a pair of scissors for two bucks, cut verses from the middle, cut it out of context, and you can prove anything. Just put it together, the cut and paste approach. And I'll be giving you lots of examples of those cut and paste approach. Well, to put it in a different language, the out-of-context interpretation. And there are four basic categories of out-of-context interpretations. One, out of the context of the verse. Some people even would not care to quote the entire verse. They clip it in the middle. And not, sometimes you, you quote only one part of a verse if there is no change in meaning. But clipping a verse in the middle in such a way that it gives a totally different meaning altogether. You know, there is one verse in the Quran that says, don't pray, don't even come close to prayers. But that's not and some of you might say, how could it be? Exactly. Muslims are required to pray five times yeah. a day. But if you continue the rest of the verse, it says, don't come to prayers when you're intoxicated. Ah. So clipping could totally even turn the meaning upside down. Yeah. The second is that sometimes people also would quote even a full verse from the Quran but paying no attention to the verses immediately before or after in the same section that deal with the same subject. In that case, you lose the context where that verse was revealed. The third is that the Quran completes and explains itself. So a person might quote even a whole section, but it's wrong. Why? Because it overlooks the context of the whole Qur'an, so the proper methodology of understanding any topic, is to bring together not only one text, not only one section, but to bring all the verses in the Qur'an and whatever relevant of hadith, authentic hadith or saying of the Prophet, together. And then you can understand the topic in context rather than going in all kinds of directions. Fourthly, out of context historically, and this is the most serious problem with lots of quotation that many writers use to say violence is rooted in Islam. Check the number of verses and surahs they quote from. You will find that most of them, most of them, come from two surahs in the Quran. Surah number eight and nine. And people who do not care to find out the context of these two surahs historically, come up with erroneous generalization about what Islam teaches. These were revealed in the context of conflict. Wow. So this video is in two sections, guys. So with time, 
we'll get to you know listen to it one after the other so in this particular clip he spoke about the misunderstanding when it comes to the quranic text so indirectly there are no errors in the quran it's just the way people you know quote it he made mention of something that quran is written in arabic language so if you see any quran written in english form the person might have you know interpreted it in his own understanding and you know we may not write it in the way you know you know when something is not really original there's difference between original and fake when you buy fake it will work well for you like the original i'm just giving an example i'm not saying something is original or fake -o. but i'm just trying to you know go deeper to the explanation so it's just trying to let us understand that you know a lot of people misunderstand, they misquote the Quran, the Quranic text. There are some things that, you know, you find in the Quran, in which if you're not careful enough, you will misunderstand it. And he made reference to one other chapter where the Quran says, do not pray. But indirectly, it's not telling you not to pray, but something led to that verse, right? But some people just pick some words from the Quran verse or pick maybe a part b part no if you want to understand the quran you need to read the quran you need to be able to learn the arabic word for you to understand the major language so indirectly just trying to let us know that the quran does not have error it does not have any kind of error there's no error in the quran it's just the way people interpret it is the way people talk about it and at the same time we are humans these scholars the preachers they can make errors they might even interpret it in a way you can understand it. They might not really give you word to word from the Quran verse, but they will summarize it in a way everybody can understand it. So he's just trying to let people know that if you are a non-Muslim or you want to know more about the religion, do your research properly, go and read the Quran, get to understand it. You know, instead of you condemning the religion, of you just, you know, concluding on what you're seeing online, not everything you see online is is true you know not every information you get to see is something that you must agree to you have to do your own research and know for yourself so you're just trying to let us understand that you know quran does not really preach all those things people f believe it to preach islam is a peaceful religion and this man is a doctor just to let you know that he has gone deep into the religion he has studied the Quran very well. That was a beautiful one. I really enjoyed it. I don't know about you, but this this particular video helped me understand more about Islam. You know, the misconception, you know, the misinterpretation, you know, everything that is wrong when it comes to the Quran. And he made mention of two things. He said the two important things for Muslims is the Quran and the Hadith. I really enjoyed this video, guys. Maybe with time, we'll keep on checking it step by step i think the 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 video is into like seven segments and along the line i'll find time for us to you know dive into it and learn more about the quranic test like as a non-muslim i'm learning a lot more from this man this doctor beautiful one let me know your thoughts in this video let me know what you think let's keep this discussion going you no know, drop your comments you know down there i'll see you guys in the next one Bye.